according to the clouds, so I won't talk about that anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, this this is a pull request Georg issued back in the fall, uh, somehow slipped through the goalie or whatever and didn't get acted on. And it's essentially adding one line to five metrics. And my suggestion is to give an action item to one of us to add that line to five metrics and do a new pull request, as opposed to the rather sometimes onerous process of, you know, dealing with all the other changes and the conflicts and like this, I think it'll be a lot easier just to change those five files again and add that line again. Okay, my, my question is, what exactly is a reaction? It's like a smiley face or a thumbs up. Okay, and so we don't have that really we don't really have that defined anywhere. So if we were to add this line, it's an aggregator. This, this I mean, would be our definition, right? So is it an aggregator, or is it, if it's a thumbs up, that might be a that might be its own metric, right? Um, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Um, uh, I think. Uh, These are these are sometimes referred to. Uh, I think Laura Dabish. Laura Dabish refers to them as signals of attention. Ah, okay. All right. So perhaps uh, I'm just um, there. There may be something a little bit deeper here than just a a reaction. Is what I'm saying. Uh, and I, I'm not sure. Do we want to? Do we want to just decide to call it a reaction, or should we look at this and? Uh, Think think more about what it is, uh, and maybe see. Maybe it is what just is, a line what does that Dabish we have to add. Call them? I think they're called signals of attention. I, I think she refers to them as signals of, of attention. That's in her uh, in that uh, that social coding paper. Uh, Seems like reaction emojis are the phrase I've heard. But I was just going to comment that it seems like a reaction would a metric like this would count a thumbs up and a thumbs down as the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah I'm just saying, point. I think maybe we need to think about this a little bit more. <laughs> so it, it might fit in with the uh, social listening metrics or else the popularity metrics as I another filter. I, I definitely don't. I mean, my opinion would be to not do that because that is so such a cluster already <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> honestly it's True. it's like the it's like the mega uber confusing metric of all time um in my opinion we're still trying to fix that over in the value group kevin to your point i think you're right i think mm -hmm. we should mm -hmm. maybe look at this a little more because it's it, i think the original uh idea came from just GitHub reactions on issues, um, you know, just because you can easily click. But, you know, as you're talking, it it, it could be apl applicable to even Twitter or other things. So, um, yeah, and and also Matthew, to your point too, we don't want to count those as, as the same. You know, <laughs> all reactions are not equal. So, um, yeah, I think it's maybe a little deeper conversation. Yeah, actually, the the University of Minnesota did a study that showed that a react they actually the platform makes a difference too. So one smiley face on an iPhone communicates a different smiley face on an Android device. And the actual what is received communicates a different reaction than what is sent. So there are platform specific discontinuities. It does seem like it's sort of measuring the engagement with a particular issue where I mean, it does say something if there's 400 smiley faces and 500 thumbs down, it says something about that issue that people are engaged with it. It doesn't necessarily communicate much more than that, but maybe that's the intent here. I think it can also um, indicate sentiment. So if, you know, if overall, if there's an overwhelming number of down votes and angry faces, then that can uh, 
I think be an indicator of some level of community health and community um, sentiment overall. Well, this is the chaos project. So you start with the goal, right? So what is this? What, what question does this answer and how does that support a goal? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So do we call it, um, should we put something in the spreadsheet that's a candidate metric called emoji or um, reaction? Was it, someone said those are react signals of attention or signals reaction? Of attention. Yeah. In the, in the Dabish work, signals of attention are used in, uh, used to help coordinate, right? So they, they signal approval or disapproval. Uh, and it, it's, it's a way that uh, uh, in flattened hierarchies, uh, people who are doing the work can, can kind of understand what they're doing in these, uh, these kind of uh, loosely coordinated uh, activities. So, I mean, a, a thumbs up or a, it's a, a signal of approval, right? A thumbs down is a single of disapproval. It's, a, it's kind of a, a red light or a green light, if you will, like keep going or, or maybe stop and rethink what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, it's probably more complex than that, but for the most part, I, I would guess that 99% of the emojis that you're, you're going to see are, are very much a signal of disapproval or a signal of approval. So probably what I should do is jump to, I'm, I'm hearing that this is a metric. At least that, that the next step would be to make it a candidate metric. Well, I, well, I did bring that up. I am not hmm. completely sure that it's a metric. So, well, <laughs> what a fine mess you've gotten us into, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think to Matthew's point too, we, we should figure out what, what we want to answer with these. Are we trying to look at sentiment? Or are we trying to look at engagement or something else? I, I think it's, well, I think both are communicated, right? If there are a lot of them that definitely signals engagement if they're valenced in one particular way or another. And I, I think emoji has evolved to the point where it's well beyond positive and negative. There, there are a range, I mean, like, how do you interpret a poop emoji? I don't know. <laughs> Underneath emojis are often just words, aren't they? Yeah. Like a plus one or a, an actual smiley face. Well, a per, you know, close colon yeah i i don't know so i mean uh i'd like to park it somewhere because i don't think we're gonna solve it today but i don't know do we just leave it open for future discussion like just add it you know well they just make a comment that uh we will consider what to do with this um in a future in the next meeting or something and we could we could open an issue. Uh, this is an oh, this is a pull request. We could uh, we could table this pull request or close this pull request, open an issue, and link to it. I mean, we can do. Um... Did that link to something else in the description, like something like three seventy eight or something like that? Oh, um, perhaps I missed that. I don't know if I'm. Just... No, you probably there's there's so many little like subtle indicators but right at the very top. Yes. No, I don't know if that was. I think that's the pull request ID. It says, "Oh, three seventy eight was the first. Where do you see this? In the right, very first comment. Very first comment. The very first line of the very first comment. <laughs> there you go. Oh, 
Looks like this is also a pull request. Okay, so uh, back in October, we did make a decision on issues closed to have the emoji. Could indicate how much a community cares about issues. Mm -hmm. Maybe a discussion with Georg would be helpful. Yeah. I mean, it might do that. It, it might, it might help us understand how much a community cares about issues or it might, uh, or it might give insight into kind of sentiment analysis and, uh, uh, in comments and, and text fields. Uh, it but ultimately like it's just kind of, it's kind of a coordinating mechanism at its base level, right? It's, as I said earlier, it's kind of like a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a stoplight, right? It seems like those it, are added to, to GitHub and GitLab to to make to to make those long threads more concise so instead of like people putting in a whole nother comment that says plus one or and that's all the, the comment is so i think that they are valuable definitely valuable um yeah that's all i was going to say <laughs> in my own experience again this, and n equals one here but the in professional setting, settings, you might see like just a like plus one regularly for people reviewing things, but sometimes it's noticeable in a project when suddenly some random comment on GitHub has 8,000 people giving it a thumbs down or something like that when it's some super controversial thing that's made hacker news. And then it, it indicates something about that issue, but that is pretty unusual to see. So I would yeah. say- you're looking, if you want to use this as like, oh, is there something, if you're monitoring the community and there's suddenly an issue that you didn't know about that shows up on your dashboard that has 5,000 comments when normally there's one or zero, mm -hmm. that right. can tell you that something is going on and then you sure. follow that up. Yes, yeah, so huge, huge spikes point out that something is going wrong, but normal use of the emoticons is just, it's just a... Uh, a coordinating feature, right? Just, uh, it just, yeah, usually it's like a, yep, I agree. It's, and often that's just the plus one, like Matthew said. Yeah. Or, or a thumbs up or, uh, those GTM. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the, the clap your hands can be, uh, like a thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like, it's, good job. So it's kind of, it's those three things, right? So, Big spikes, as Matthew said, uh, can alert you to something, uh, can alert you to the thing that Georg is pointing out towards the top, right? How important an issue is. Uh, however, the majority of the time, it's probably more connected to kind of sentiment or just the, the coordinating activities of a project. So it's, it's probably those three things. So in that context, uh, we do have a metric called burstiness. I don't know if that fits in here as, as another parameter or another thing to look at, but it seems like it might fit. I was thinking of the burstiness also because of the spikes. Is this a part of, you know, is this a component of burstiness more than each of these individual I think it can be both. Like if if it is showing a spike, it is a part of burstiness. And if I'm it only is laughing, regular... I'm smiling for that because it's like we're classic academic types now. It could be it could be either. Yes. 
<laughs> if we if we keep it as a so we were talking about it as a filter, right? I think of, yes, I think so. Okay, so if we use it as a filter, uh, when we use it as a filter in burstiness, it would be it it would make a lot of sense, right? So to use it as a filter in burstiness. So so going back to our original conversation, maybe this isn't its own metric. Maybe this is a filter that shows up in these other metrics, but at the same time, uh, we do need a little more understanding of what it is in order to uh, apply it as a filter, right? Although metrics can be filters too. So uh, we could define it as a metric and then use it as a filter exactly the way this pull request is recommending. Yes. Thinking of it as burstiness seems like it has the benefit of removing the requirement to gauge sentiment. Then you're no longer pretending that you're going to differentiate between thumbs up and thumbs down. But I think I, yeah, I think that I think that filter would it would appear differently in different metrics, right? So if we're looking at these, uh, and I, I, I'm sorry, I forget what uh, reactions. If we're looking at these reactions in a in a metric that has to do with sentiment analysis, then that that the filter uh, all of a sudden it does become you know thumbs up and thumbs down becomes important. If we're looking at burstiness, then the only thing we care about is the presence of a large number of emoticons. Uh, and it's, that would basically just be a pointer to say, hey, something important is happening. Look and see what it is. Okay. Uh, but so it's a, it's a filter on burstiness. I think, I think it's a filter on, on all of this, all of those metrics that were discussed. Uh, but I still think it, I think it means those three things. So I think we probably do need to define it as a metric. And then if it's applied as a filter, we probably need to unpack that a little bit on how it's being applied. All right. So I think the decision is we will apply this as a filter on a number of metrics. We will also develop a, a new metric. It might be helpful just to paste in that PR too. Oh yeah, for oh. sure. For sure, good idea. And is the reactions metric that remains to be defined. So at this point, I think we would just add it to the spreadsheet. Yep. Yes. Yes. All right. I guess community growth. No, that's what I, uh, community growth is what I was thinking. Seems to yes. be the closest. I feel like uh, does this belong to the evolution? Then the question is, where does burstiness live? I think it does belong in well, part of it belongs in evolution anyway. Yeah. Um. Burstiness is in common, if that's helpful. I was thinking uh, of common do for this one, especially. Yeah, can you scroll emoji. up? It could be, uh, it could be process quality. Or... Uh, I was going to say process quality, yeah. Yeah, reviews, yeah, change requests. So it's kind of a review or feedback, something along that. It is feed, yeah, you're right. It's feedback, it, it, right? It's a feedback, so, yeah. So it's a feedback. So it is a part of a review, kind of a review. Okay. All 
and then I'll put this pull request. And then Matthew had mentioned uh, reaction emoticons or emojis. Do we want to? Um, do we want to have reactions and emoji as maybe one? reaction are... reaction emoji? Emoji reactions. So for the should I change this to emoji reactions or create a separate metric called emoji reactions? I think we change this one to for now. Let's just let's change it to reaction emoji. Uh, just to just so that we are uh, explicit in what it is, and uh, the name can change through uh, building the metric if need be. Uh, listening to this, like the reaction emoji feels weird rather than emoji reaction. This is my two cents. I, like I feel um, like that. So are the are the emojis reacting or are people reacting with emojis? The people reacting with emojis yeah. will be the right way. But you know, like listening to uh, you know, sometimes sounds tell you something different, or maybe it's my perception or what about emoji? reactions and and emoji? Because like a plus one are isn't technically a thing like it's not an it, it, i don't think plus one is emoji right uh it, it is it, it is it is and it isn't right so like a i think a thumbs up it. is actually a plus we, one <laughs> nothing is real it's yes and no right. <laughs> i'm sorry it's not personal it's like, uh yeah so do, yeah do react just do reactions and emoji for now and then through i think when we build this okay. when we build this metric the the name can change and and we can be more. yeah okay all right so and and moving this to common totally totally cool as far as i'm concerned we just have to and we've done this before we would have to bring the if it's a filter on some things we would just bring it back to those metrics in evolution so as in all cases where this lives is not critically important I do think um, it's, it fits nicely in process quality if we want to keep it. Yeah. Uh, but it is her. kind of a weird one, right? So yeah, it could go in common pretty easily. It, yeah, like, and I don't care where it, where it lives. Um, my suggestion is that um, since we have Matthew here that we, uh, like uh, the next item that we maybe address are these individual and organizational credit contribution credit metrics um that you know we i think that's i think we can actually make some progress fleshing those out based on what we know but i'm also open to just proceeding in the order of the agenda which was given no thought whatsoever other than the copying and pasting of last week's yeah let's just I... let's jump down because otherwise we won't we won't get to it yeah can somebody quickly brief him because I missed last meeting. What is this individual and organizational contribution? It feels like more of a value thing. Matthew, do you want to give the quick overview as the expert while I create some Google Docs? Yeah, absolutely. So this could go in lots of different ways depending on the goals of a community, but um, this is a a, a something we've been using in the Drupal community since 2015, where on a pull request, well, well I'll say, well, it, it's not, we don't have pull requests. Drupal.org predates GitHub. So on an issue, whenever we commit code or we have issues for other things, like you have a meeting or you presented a conference, you can get credit in the Drupal community. And when you get credit, then you are able to attribute your work to, I did my work as part of my employment. Okay. You can also say I did it on behalf of a customer. So like I work at a company called Lullabot. I could say I okay. did this work for Lullabot. Okay. I did this work on behalf of my client, Georgia Public Broadcasting. And then you can also right. check a 
box that says I did this as a volunteer. Okay. So, so if I'm doing work on public media, which means something to me, I might also volunteer my time in the evening. So it could be all three. I could be doing something for my employer, for a client, and as a volunteer, or I right. could just be doing it for my employer or what else. So we have that on every issue. And okay. we are trying to move that. We're trying to um, raise awareness. That's what led me to chaos of the way okay. we're doing this because we want to make it available on GitLab. And okay. then eventually see if GitHub or Bitbucket or GNU Savannah or whoever else would like to have okay. this as well to make it more of a standard thing. Okay. Yeah, listening to that, uh, what I feel, like I'm trying to connect it with the evolution. Like I, I, I see the importance of this work, uh, which you have proposed. I really appreciate that. But like I'm trying to see how it evolves. Like, does it show any evolution over the period of time? Are we tracking any kind of evolution in that? That's what my only concern was. Sure. So Dries Boitart, uh, the project founder and lead of the Drupal community, when he proposed this, the idea was to use it as a way to incentivize organizations to contribute to the project. Therefore, um, the way we have used these data has been to create uh, a page on drupal.org that lists all of the Drupal or organizations that are contributing to the project in the goal, wh whether it's a good goal or not, because there's, I've been researching leaderboards and know there's a lot of, um, of issues there is to incentivize organizations to have their their people show up so they show up on this marketplace page so they contribute more to the project so it has all of these other benefits of being able to understand for example diversity of a project it has a benefit of being able to understand volunteerism in the project it has the benefit of being able to use those data to see how how the how how mixed of a contributor base goes into the project because suddenly you have these three other things that tell you all kinds of other information potentially. And we have tried to use it to evolve, to evolve the Drupal community by doing that, that having that list. And it has shown us, for example, something that we knew about that we, that many, so I've been involved in the community for over a decade and we've, we've thought that the community started out mostly as people, as hobbyists and volunteers. And now we're able to see the data showing the increase of organizational um, commitment to the Drupal project. We've seen that grow. We've seen volunteerism uh, decline slightly. So I think it, it's given us a lot of insight. Um, there's a, we publish a report each year talking about all of these different issues about um, how we give credit. It also um, combined with using issues for other things like um, speaking at conferences and all of that. Like it, because we use issues in such a broad way, like every time I do a meeting for an initiative I'm involved in, we have an issue. Everybody who attends can get credit. So like if we used this on the chaos project right now in this meeting, we would have the meeting, we'd have the minutes in an issue. And then all five of us could say, we are contributing to chaos. And then we could also say, I'm doing this on behalf of my employer, but probably wouldn't be for a client. You could also say you're volunteering, whatever it might be. And it tells us a lot about how people are participating and to what level. So, I mean, I can go on and on. I can connect yeah. it to all of the different kinds of metrics that, that like the Apache maturity model, the lightweight needs assessment, and a lot of these other the finos things talks about organizations and the desire for this kind of thing. So I think folks do use it as a way to grow the community, but it definitely can go anywhere. Okay. Really. So yeah, that's, maybe that's then awesome. maybe we then define the metric and then let's decide where it lives is fine. It will be the best option. I think the the conversation we had had in the community meeting is that yeah. uh, whichever whichever working group. Yeah wants to work on it, it's, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable, 
I'm comfortable working on it here in, in evolution. Yeah. I do believe that the, the way we're talking about it, it fits, it fits really strongly with the value working group. Uh, if I were to bring it in, I would bring it in there, but let's be yeah. honest, uh, three of I us like, or actually four of us from this group four, are also in value. So it's just, yeah, a, that's it. That's where I propose. Uh, let's define it, uh, define the metric, and then we can let it decide where it lives. It really doesn't matter where it lives. The goal so, is to have a proper metric. Matthew, with your awareness of the various complexities of implementing these metrics, is it easier to begin with organizational or individual? Oh, that's interesting. So, um, and I'll just make a comment on the value. You, a, a number of people have said value. It might be a good place for this to go. So I asked the question yesterday in the meeting about where this could happen because I have a, my client, I meet with them at the same time every week as the value working group meets. So I couldn't actually go to that. So that's why I'm here. So that's another like practical thing where I ask. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's perfectly fine, Matthew. That's where we said, like, four of us do attend value meetings, so we know it, and that's where we said, let's define it, and then we can let her decide where it lives. It yeah, really doesn't absolutely. matter. I'm fine doing the work here. Yes. And and, so do still, I. and still having it live in value if that's what we decide. So, yeah, I mean, we're. Yeah. I, I think I think we've reached the point with 57 metrics, frankly, that we're going to have to organize the index of them differently than the working groups that created them anyway. Yeah. Thank like you. I've been, say, I've been saying that for like a year. Yeah. <laughs> I've been right there with you. It, yeah. It is. So. Um, I just wanted to make a note that we do have a metric called types of contributions that touches mm -hmm. on this because it's, it's aimed to capture that data. So I, I just uh, linked it in the chat, but uh, we might want to look at that and see how this metric would, would fit with that or link to that or how that works together. Types of contribution, I am bringing it up. And that is also in common as well, just for the record, in case anyone cares. So uh, looking at this list feels like what Matthew has uh, like, just told me that attending meeting, writing blogs or attending conference or some kind of a contribution yeah so the, the difference here is this is this is just a list of types of contribution yes and the metric that we're talking about would actually uh is actually it, is actually connected to a person or an organization yes so yes. the types of contributions would be a maybe a filter within this new metric yes. uh, but it's not the metric the metric is the the metric is the activity of a person or an organization. Yeah, I agree. I I would actually suggest that this falls even more in line with uh, the other the metric called organizational diversity. Where yeah, I agree with that. We can, I mean, that already exists, um, but it's not it's not quite the same thing. Is um, that an evolution metric? Uh, no, that one is common as well. Yeah, uh, but, but once again, so the organizational diversity, it looks at the activity of an organization in relation to the rest of the project, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a bit of a, I, I think that one is basically a ratio, like how much of a project is, how much of a project is one organization? Percentage of commits by each organization merge for reviews. Yeah. So these are all things that you can interpolate more accurately using the system that we're proposing. The because because right now a lot of the systems okay, and at least you guys are know more about this than I do, but in looking at all of these systems, it seems like a lot of them assume that you are doing the work for a project based on the employer mm -hmm. listed in your your user profile um, right whereas the drupal.org model only allows you to use your employer for one field that ha that is listed in your profile and it um and then you can also do things on behalf of a client but 
the, mm -hmm. the, the your your employer might change or something like that. So getting a sense of the diversity, a lot of times you're maybe not even doing something for your employer. So they may assume you're doing that, but maybe you're doing it on your own time. So that's that's another interesting thing. The Finos community, community, for example, they they look at the uh, that's the financial. Maybe you guys know this already. The financial technical uh, group um, that Intech. works with the finance yeah. sector, but they like in, they say a project is healthier when it does not have workers require a separate uh, GitHub ID for their contributions to the project. So there's different ways of looking like they don't want people to be volunteering on projects. They think that's a sign of not healthy. They want people to be paid for their work, which is what this, mm -hmm. which, which is what this particular, these metrics have. That's the conversation we've had a lot in the Drupal community is encouraging businesses to pay their employees to work on the Drupal project, which goes to the evolution thing as well. I'm wondering, so as a, as a metric, if we just called this metric contribution credit, I'm wondering if we need to have two separate metrics, one for individual and one for organization, or if it can just be one, one metric, uh, one metric for contribution credit, and, and, and then, and we can talk about individual or organizational contribution credits within that metric. <clears throat> And then we can also, we can kind of connect it out to types of contributions. So we, we can link to that one. And we can also link to organizational diversity. Uh, that might, that yeah. might simplify that. I worry if we, I worry if we separate it into two things, there might be too much overlap with organizational diversity. Yeah. Uh, which might get confusing for us. The title contribution credit feels like okay. Yes, we uh, we are not uh, focusing on individual organization. We are looking at uh, giving the credit to the whoever is contributing, whether organization, individual, representing client, or whatever this is. I I, I like Kevin's idea, keeping like contribution credit as a metric. Yes, and I'll say that's how we use it in Drupal. Um, although the terminology varies, some people call it attribution credit, some people call it issue credit, some people call it contribution credit. Mm. We settled on using the, the phrase issue credit because all of these are connected to an issue. Um, <laughs> now that's different with GitHub because they don't use the phrase issue, um, but that's what it comes down to is it's not, a co it's not just a code credit, it's a contribution. So contribution does seem to me like a, a good way of measuring this. I'll, I'll also say that most of the people who care about this, um, they approach this fundamentally from a position of wanting to give credit to the right people that they see doing good work and wanting to include as many people in that as they can as a way of extending beyond just code contributions. So that 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 and specifically in, enticing organizations to um uh sponsor their employees to give credit so um i i like the contribution credit as a as a title if that makes sense to you guys as well but those are there are slight differences with that attribution issues in whatever i forget the github phrase for that Uh, I think the way we were talking, uh, Sean, are you writing in there currently? I think so. So you, you're trainer, focusing on the I organizational. I there's two uh, metrics. Yeah. There's two metrics. So I just started with the organizational one. We can start with the individual one if you want. Uh, so we, the, we we're just we talking about on only having one. one. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm. It's like contribution credit, and then in the discussion we can say it's be individual organization or. Well, that's super Even. easy to change. <laughs> uh, I do kind of, I, I, I think, yeah, calling it, uh, having issue in it would be problematic for us because I, I yes. think it would be confusing. And I do, I do like uh, attribution as well. Yeah. Uh, but I think, uh, 
I do think I think contribution credit is really explicit. Yeah. I, it, no. Yep. I just make sure I've got the right link in there for the one I saved. I just I pasted in a, a recent the most recent report um, to talk about the specific questions that we we answer using the the data from our issue credits. But, you know, we answer the question, who is working on, uh, you know, what are we working on? How much of the work we can't, the, what are we working on? Doesn't necessarily tie to organizations, but then we can say how much of the work is sponsors, who's sponsoring the work, and then how diverse is the community? So those are some of the questions that we answer with using this system. So I pasted that in the chat in case you wanted to use any of those. I do I just have to copy and paste so the 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 other half of the so so we're able to look at for example how much work is sponsored how much work is purely sponsored whether or how much work is a blend of sponsored and volunteer you know for an ind for each individual so the the other part of that is how much is sponsored versus volunteered versus blending, which is a concept that seems to trip a lot of people up. Like, how can you be sponsored and volunteer? But that's why I started off with that example of we do get to that sort of fine grain. And, and we, we have seen the evolution of purely sponsored credits go up in our community as a result of using this. So and we're we're measuring this at the task level, right? We're measuring this as anybody that contributes to a particular contribution. So whether that's a, I mean, again, I don't I don't know that chaos is dictating here or making assumptions about whether it's a code contribution or not, because that's kind of another interesting issue. Is that do for contributions, I, I don't believe we we don't make that distinction. A contribution that, that metric that was referred to earlier, I can't. I don't know if I still have it up. Types but of uh, types of yeah. contribution that was created explicitly because when we began, I think we were where a lot of the open source community was five years ago, which is the only contribution that counts is code, and we've explicitly said contribution and used that definition across most metrics there are a few metrics specifically related to commits just like there are the issues where commit is the thing but when we're trying to look at overall contribution the the metrics are defined to count more than commits which of those things get counted are ultimately the choice of the person who is using those tools yeah yeah that's <clears throat> another distinction that most people that are get into this get confused by is the difference between a commit credit and a contribution uh, mm -hmm. or, or what we call an issue credit so in other words lots of folks will use like in their uh, commit messages they will include the people as like an attribution to say these are the people that com contributed to this commit which is different than these people were part of this contribution or there was no actual commit to a code repository. So yeah, so that that's awesome that we can then, it means the way we can approach this met metric is not to be code centric. Yes. Okay. That would, I mean, we could approach it being code centric, but I think, I think it's more likely to be a positive. So we're making a value choice. And I think if we make a value choice to make it be you know for all types of contributions then we're welcoming a larger community of contributors into open source and whereas if we restrict it to commits or to issues or to issues and commits we're not i don't know it feels like we're about the value isn't sort of welcoming all comers but here are the kinds of things you can do that we care about. And if you want to do these other things, well, that's fine, but we don't care um, as a broad value statement. 
That uh, sounds good. To me. I suspect you agree with me. So, but the question is, are we focused on the base the contribution is given or we are focused on the contribution is given? Because the first question is how credit, which feels like uh, looking at the different ways the contribution is given. And the other one which I've written is like, who has contributed is like bifurcating individual organization or... I think... Uh... Types types and contributions is a is going to be a filter. Okay. Uh, it uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in that that high level question. Yeah. No. What I was trying to clarify is like, are we focused on the method, like way of contributing, or? So the way it's written now, the how how are they given credits? I don't is, think that's the way we want to to say it. Yes, that's what I was trying to. Because that's why I have written another question. Who has contributed uh, to an open source project? So I changed how and using what heuristics are credits given for, I guess I shouldn't have crossed out for, for contributions to an open source project. Oh. Um, and I don't know if her, I don't know if they're necessary. It, Matthew's strategy at Drupal is more than heuristic. There's an actual formula. But my, my impression is, of course, like I've done this like with weighted social network. I mean, I've done this a lot. You always have to have some sort of empirical or theoretical or monetary reason that you weight certain things different ways. And that, of course, shifts fairly frequently once people learn how to game a system. Um, Heuristics is sort of my general way of covering that squishiness. Um, but I don't know if there's a better way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I, I referenced this in a, a post to that uh, the chaos community email list yesterday, but we had that specific problem of people gaming the system, writing bots to add issues to, to be able to get credit for certain things where um, like, you know, changing a, 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 a style thing across the whole Drupal project <laughs> um, really? where they uploaded a patch and it, it, it was useful, but ultimately it, it created this sense, this, um, this, these people clearly were not contributing in the same way. So then we had a, we created a, you know, we created the weights and measures, and then that had negative, that had positive and negative um, results in that people, people that, um, that had worked really hard to get their companies up on this page. Again, this is the problem with the leaderboard, but this is how this data, these data are used. They felt like their contributions were suddenly devalued, like they were no longer important. They, they felt, you know, really upset. And then we formed a committee to look at this to try and come up with different weights. <laughs> oh God, that's a, the surest way to kill something. <laughs> interviewed a whole bunch of CEOs and other leaders and companies and then did a survey. And then ultimately everybody kind of said, there's no way to really weight this to say, here's the best way to do it. Because every time they played with the numbers, we had all these sample spreadsheets and whatnot, people were left out. And we said, well, wait a second. Well, that company has been doing all this work and they should, you know, so you I mean, I'm just, this is like anecdotal evidence to support what Sean just said, um, which is, it's really hard. The, 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 what we do with these data, I think is super tricky, but I think you are pretty safe in using this to look at way, look at like what organizations are contributing, how many people are volunteers, those types of things without using the sort of uh, leaderboards, I think is really valuable because you can see these things over time. But in that, that image you just put in, like that just shows one way that we use this where we can see yeah. where, so like it's not actually used all that much for events and governance and those types of things. It's mostly used for our contributed, there's 15,000 contributed modules in Drupal or something like that. And then, yeah. the, and then, so this and one I way. Yeah, and I think I think we we focused so events has been a focus in the badging program because it's significant. It's like 
exponentially easier to ask the questions and make an assessment about an event than it is to actually go through the history and life cycle of an entire repository and all of its little dark corners to to assess that for diversity and inclusion and so in general i think we don't have a lot of metrics pertaining to events i think the badging program is a an outlier just because hey we can actually measure this <laughs> uh, in in the event but it's much more difficult to measure at the repository level and oh my gosh we're six minutes over i've been so into this conversation that i neglected to note that but we got a metric started so i'm super stoked about that and we boiled we boiled two metrics into one which is great uh and i suggest we continue this metric and try to give it a finishing touch after some thought next in two weeks sounds good thank is you it? everybody for the questions and the this is just awesome this <laughs> <laughs> thank you matthew yeah. thank you thank you for being yeah, really this. Glad you're here all right so goodbye everybody i'm i think i stopped the recording i can't really tell but it will when i close the meeting <laughs>